Okay, let's look at this uh, example about the resistance in series and parallel. Uh, you see it says in the figure, that's the figure here, but you will surprised, you'll be surprised because there's a capacitor here in this, in this circuit. We have one resistor for ohms, two resistors here. Can you tell me, my son, what is the combination of these two? Uh, since the same current is passing through them, they are in series, okay? So I can replace them by one resistance equal to five ohms if I want, okay? So I have a current I, and that current is three ampere. When the current comes to this point, this is called the junction here. This is junction, okay? It's called the junction. And you know that very well, eh? And there's another junction here. The current, when it comes to the junction, it, it, it separates into two currents, I1 and I2, okay? And then join again here to, for the I, which is 3 ampere. This is 3 ampere, and this is 3 ampere, okay? 3 ampere. All right, so you have I1 and I2. You have a capacitor here, 5 microfarad, and when the capacitor is fully charged, we are talking about now when the capacitor is fully charged. What does it mean capacitor is fully charged? So uh, we have to write now that the current I, which is 3 ampere, is actually equal to I1 plus I2. That's the, that's the, at the junction here, okay? But when the, when the, when the capacitor is fully charged, fully charged, as uh, C, C is fully charged, it means there will be no current through the capacitor because it is fully charged. The current is, is, what is the, what is the, well, why we have the current there? The current, the, uh, is to charge the capacitor, but when, since the capacitor is fully charged, it says when the capacitor is fully charged, uh, uh, the, the, the current I1 will be equal to zero. Then I2 will be 3 ampere, okay? It will be equal to I. So the, all the current, the current will go through, through here. This is, becomes like an open circuit. There will be no current here, okay? So it will, the current will go through here, for, through this resistance, come through this resistance tree, and, and go back to this point here. He want the charge on the capacitor. He want Q. The charge, Q, on the capacitor, okay? So the idea is to find the charge on the capacitor. So the charge on the capacitor, Q, is equal C times the voltage on the capacitor, Vc. Capacitance is given to you 5 microfarad times uh, the voltage across the capacitor, this voltage here, this voltage, between these two points, okay? But that voltage is exactly equal to the voltage across the resistance here, because they are in parallel. You can see that these two resistance, I can draw the figure again, so I'm going to write the capacitance here, and put my resistance, these two resistance, I'm going to put them in series, I'm going to call it 5 ohms, okay? And I have this resistance here, which is the 4 ohms, and the current I, and the same current, by the way. This current I with the ampere will go down because the capacitor is fully charged. And then they go, come back here. Uh, this is point A, and that's point B. This is another way of drawing the figure clearer, okay? The potential difference here, since they are in parallel, this V, the potential across the resistor and the, uh, and the capacitor are the same. So V across the capacitor, I'm looking for it, is equal to V across the 5 ohm resistor. And the V, the potential across the 5 ohm resistor, is equal RI, okay? R, I, R, okay? The current. So what is the current going through these two resistors? Is it is a 3 ampere, okay? That's the 3 ampere. I told you that the current here is zero because it's fully charged. So it's 3 times the resistance, which is 5, that's giving me 15 volts. That's the, volt, the potential difference, V, here, across the capacitor or across this, this resistor, the two, because they are in parallel, okay? So we have a parallel combination here. First of all, we have a series of the resistors, and we have a parallel combination between the, these resistors and the capacitor here. So the charge on the capacitor, Q, will be the capacitance, which is 5, and the power minus 6, farad, times 15 volt, and that's give me 75 mic 10 to the power minus 6, sorry, no. let me write down 10 to the power minus 6, coulomb, or 75 micro coulomb. That's the charge on the capacitor when it is fully charged for this special combination where you have a current of 3 ampere and you have these two resistors in series here, okay? 
So that's, uh, that's how you, first let's, uh, let's uh, recapitulate here quickly. Uh, we can see that the current, when the capacitor is fully charged, there will be no current, I1 will be zero here, and the current which is going through this, uh, this resistance is the same as the current going through here. So we get the idea from there, from this current and the resistance 5 ohms, I can find the voltage across these two resistors, and which is, it is the same as the voltage across the capacitor because they are in parallel. Once I get the voltage across the capacitor, 15 volts, I can multiply by the capacitance here to find the charge on the capacitor. Thank you. Okay, another example related to uh, uh, resistors in series and parallel. Uh, it says uh, in this figure here, you can see there's an, a, a battery here, an EMF of 6 volts. So my EMF is 6 volts here, 6 volts, plus or minus. And you know the current should go from here, current I, go through the resistor here. There's a junction here, so it has to separate, okay, into all, each current a current will go through each resistor here, and they join here at this junction. This is the junction here. They join here, and the current here is I, the same current going through the battery, okay? So the current I is the same here. But here it, it, it separates into different currents. So, I have three resistors, R1, 100 ohm, R2, R3, and R4 are 75 ohm. They are equal, okay? And the battery is ideal. IDN means there's no antenna resistance here, okay? And the EMF is 6 volt. What is the current? He want the current I in this resistance R1. In the resistance R1, okay? Which means the, it's the same current which passes through the battery, okay? So he want the current passing through the battery which goes through R1. I'm going to draw the figure indifferently a little bit to make it clear for you. Uh, okay? You can see here that the current I, I, and the current I coming through here, when it reaches this point, it, it separates into three currents. I'm going to call this one I, I, I2, and here I3, and here I4. And you can see that you can see clearly that these resistors are in parallel. It's clear. It's clear. You can see them. Huh? They, have the, they are in parallel. Okay? They are in parallel. It means I can, I can find the equivalent of these three. Okay? I'm going to call it 1 over R. 2, 3, 4, which is 1 over R2, plus 1 over R3, plus 1 over R4, because I have them in parallel, remember? Eh? So, because the three resistors are the same, I'm going to call it uh, 3 over R2, for example, because they are equal, okay? So, 1 over R, 1 over R, 1 over R, 3 over R2. So, from there, I can find the resistance R2, 3, which is R, one of them divided by 3, okay? So it will be 75 divided by 3. And this will give me uh, 25, okay? 25 ohms. So that's the equivalent. And I'm going to draw the circuit again with the equivalent, okay? So I have here the EMF. I have R1 here. And I have this R234 equal 25 ohms. And this is 100 ohm. And there's a current I going through here. And that's the EMF. Actually, so now I can, to find the current, I, if I want to, because he's looking for the current in R1, to find the current, I have to find the combination of these two. You can see that they are clearly in series, they have the same current, okay? So, uh, you end up with uh, the e your EMF like this, and one resistance, I'm going to call it R1, 2, 3, 4, which is the equivalent of all of them, which is equal to the sum, so it will be R1 plus R234, uh, it will be 100 plus 25, 125 ohms. That's the equivalent resistance. Uh, and the current EI, the current I is here. Okay? Uh, so I can find the current now, I, going through the battery. Okay? It's E over R123. And uh, the, the, the voltage here, the potential difference across the battery is 6 volts, divided by 125. Okay, that's the equivalent resistance. And if you do this correctly, the calculation correctly, you, point, you got 0 0.048 ampere. That's the current passing through the, the battery. But remember, it is the same passing through R1, okay? So the current they are looking for going through R1 is actually this current here. It's exactly this current here, okay? That's the current passing through, passing through R1, okay? Passing through R1 because it is the same one 
passing through the, the battery. And that's the current passing through the battery here is the same as the current passing through R1, the resistance R1, okay? That's, that's, the, that's the answer to this question here. Now, again, I'm going to remind you that this combination here, maybe it's not clear, you draw it differently to show that they have the same, uh, they are in parallel, they are in parallel, okay? Once they are in parallel, you find the equivalent of them, okay, that's the equivalent, R234, and then again you find another equivalent between these two in series, and then you find the current through the battery. The current through the battery is the same as the current through the resistance, and you get, you get the, the answer here. Thank you. Okay, let's look at this uh, last example related to resistance in series and parallel. It says uh, we have here five resistors, one, two, three, four, five, uh, as shown in the figure. What is the potential difference? He wants the potential difference VA minus VB. It means where do we start, my son, to find this potential difference? You start at the final, and this is the final, and this is the initial. So you start from here and go like this to find the potential difference, okay? That's how you do it. Uh, he give you the, uh, uh, the current in the 2.7 ohms, the current here, I, is given to you, 1.22 ampere. That's the only current he gave you, and he gave you also the values of the, the, uh, R, okay? The different resistance. So, let's, uh, let me show you how. I'm going to put these two. What do you think about the combination of these two here? I don't like to see resistance like this. I'm going to put them together, but you, it's clear that they are in series, okay? They are in series. So I have a current here, I, coming here, and it reached this junction here, it divides into I1 and I2, okay? They, they go back together here at this junction here, this I2 here, by the way, yeah? and that's I1 here. The current when it goes through a resistance, its value doesn't change, okay? And then they are grouped again here as I, which is a current I here. So in this resistance and this resistance, the same current passes through them. But this one and these two, no. But these two resistors, they have the same current. They are in series. You can see them. Huh? So I'm going to put them together. I'm going to redraw this figure again. So I'm going to put the resistance here, the 3.2 ohms. Okay. That's point A here. And then I'm going to do something like this. Okay. Let me draw it differently now. Okay. I can do, you can do this, by the way. It's not, it's not prohibited. Okay. This is the 2.7 ohm. And this is the combination of the two, which is 6.5. 6.5 ohms. I know the current here. I know the current here, which is 1.22. 1.22 ampere. Okay? At the junction here, junction. What do you think about... So I can find the potential difference between these two points here. This V. I can find it. I can find this potential difference between these two points. Okay, so what, what do we think about this combination? So 1.22 times 2.7, that's 3.294, okay? 3.294, 3, so I'm going to multiply 1.22 times 2.7, IR, the potential difference between these two points, that's 3.294 volts, this is here, the potential V. Okay, that's the potential V, okay, between th these two points. And you can see clearly, my son, you can see clearly that this resistance and this resistance, they are in parallel. Okay, they are in parallel. So I can find, I know the potential here, and I know that this, I can find the current, I2. Current, I'm going to, I'm calling this one I1, okay? I can find the current I2. So I2 will be 3 point two nine four that's the potential difference divided by the resistance six point five I'm looking for the current I two so that I can find the current I because I the current I is equal I one plus I two you can see the junction here the point this point here okay so that's the current I two so if you do it correctly if you divide correctly here with the calculator you get point five zero seven point five zero seven ampere that's the current I two and the current I1 is given to you in the problem, 1.22 ampere, is given to you this current, 1.22. So you can find the current I, 
the current I coming through through this resistance. Okay? Okay? That's 1.727. 1.727 ampere. That's the current. Now I'm going to re redraw this, okay? I'm going to redraw this. That's the point A. That's the resistance 3.2 ohm. I'm going to put this, I know the current now here, I, 1.727 ampere. I'm going to calculate the resistance, the equivalent of this two, they are in parallel. So when they are in parallel, I can tell you what is the resistance equivalent, it's 1.9 ohms. Please, do 1.65 plus 1.2.7, 1 over, this will give me 1 over R. So you can find the resistance R, equivalent of these two, is equal 1.9 ohm, okay? You can find, you can do the calculation here. And then I have this uh, last resistance here outside. This is 3.6, that's the 3.6 ohms. So I put it here, 3.6 ohms, and that's point B. So, can you find VB minus v, VA minus VB here or not now? It's looking for VA minus VB. So VA minus VB, I have to start from here and go to the final. So I'm going, I'm going this way. Okay, and the current is coming in my, in my face, so the potential difference will be, will be positive, okay? So I have, the first thing I see is the 3.6 resistance times the current 1.727 plus 1.9 times 1.727 plus 3.2 times 1.727, okay? That's the potential, now you reach point A and that's it. Now, you can do it the other way is to put this in series combination and then multiply by the current, or you can do it by moving from this point to this point through the three resistors. Because I can find the equivalent here, okay? I can do it like this. I can put point A here. I can put this resistance, point B, and R equivalent here, which is the sum of them, which is, equal to, is going to be equal to 8.707. 8.707 ohms, okay? Or you can do it this way. You can go through, you can use this here, the current I, which is 1.727 ampere. So you do, you, do, you do the product of these two, or you do, do it like this uh, by going through each resistance, okay? At the end, well, the, the final answer will be, if you do the calculation correctly, it will be 15 volts, okay? 15 volts. So VA minus VB will be equal to 15 volts, whether you do it through this way or this way, the, the product of these two numbers, you get the same answer, okay? So that's, the, that's a very important problem and a very interesting problem. It shows you uh, that you can, you can modify your circuit to make it clear. You can see it here by putting these two resistors in series and then you redraw to make sure that you, 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 it's clearly seen that these two are in parallel. When they are in parallel, they have the same V. So the voltage here that I calculate through this resistance is the same voltage through this resistance here. And from there, I can find the current I2, which is going through this resistance. From the current I2 and I1, I can find the current I coming from here, which is the same as the current I going through this resistance. The current I here and here are the same, okay? Thank you.